I got a great question from a guy named Pat Dane recently. He has 30,000 connections on LinkedIn and he wants to know what's the best way to do affiliate marketing on LinkedIn. Welcome to the Affiliate Guy podcast. If you want to grow your income, serve your tribe and enjoy all the benefits of affiliate marketing and having your own affiliates, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me today. Let's get started. Hey, what's up? It's Matt here. Welcome back to another episode of the Affiliate Guy podcast. And as I mentioned at the top of the episode, I got a question from Pat Dane. And hey, if you have a question, go to asktheaffiliateguy.com and ask your question there. You're going to notice that the overwhelming majority of episodes coming up are, are going to be from that. They're going to be from these awesome questions that we've been getting. We have about 40 questions in queue, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't ask yours. I mean, we're, we, we're going to answer all of them over the next year or so. And that's going to be the primary content that we have over the next year on the Affiliate Guy podcast is answering all of those amazing questions you guys have. Because the cool thing about questions like this, he says, I have 30,000 first connections on LinkedIn. I'd love to hear your suggestions on how I can do affiliate marketing with those connections. The cool thing about this question is, what if you don't have 30,000? What if you have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, whatever the number may be? What if it's on Facebook? What if it's on, you know, whatever? The principles that I'm going to share today, they apply to LinkedIn, they apply to Facebook, they apply to your email marketing, they apply to anything. You know, that's the cool thing is these principles are universal. We're going to really hone in on LinkedIn, but again, the principles are universal. That's the beauty of making sure you listen to every episode. Another thing I, I would encourage you to do is, is if you're an affiliate manager, make sure you listen to the episodes that are about affiliate marketing, you know, that are about the other side. If you are a product creator, make sure you listen to all the episodes. And the same is true if all you want to know right now is how to make money as an affiliate still listen to those episodes that aren't about affiliate marketing, but they're about running an affiliate program. Because guess what? One day you're going to have an affiliate program. I know you will. And I want you learning that stuff now. So make sure you keep coming back to every episode and go to asktheaffiliateguide.com to ask your question. It's best if you do it on SpeakPipe. Uh, we can play that audio here, but if you know if you're not comfortable with that, you don't have a good audio, whatever. Uh, you know, do it in writing, like uh, like Pat did. You know, he just sent me uh, uh, filled out the form and, and asked me a question there. So, again, the principles for LinkedIn are the same as anything. We're gonna have, I think, we're gonna end up with eight, nine principles today. We'll see when I get through this, but I think I have, I think I have eight, maybe nine to share with you today. And that first one is to provide consistent, valuable content to your followers. So on LinkedIn, that means a daily post of some sort. Now I'm going to give you kind of the formula that I use, but with LinkedIn, what we found is about once a day. Now, typically that turns into eight times, nine times a week, because occasionally you end up with something that's more timely and maybe there's a news piece and you need to comment on it, something like that. And that disrupts it. So eight, nine times a week, but about daily. We found that to be the same for Facebook is about once a day, occasionally twice, occasionally twice. Twitter, you know, 16 to 20 times a day. And you know, there's just different mediums. So just know that these different mediums have different uh, frequencies. So what we do, what we recommend is two posts a week, they're either your own content or a link to your own content. So you're either writing your own content on LinkedIn or you're writing a blurb and then linking to a blog post or, or something else. That's two posts a week. So that could be linking to a video. It could be linking to anything, a blog post, a podcast even. We recommend three shares of other people's content. So that's three to two, 50% more other people's content versus your own content. That's, this shows that you're not just out there on LinkedIn trying to, you know, pimp your own stuff, so to speak. You're, you're really trying to provide value to your audience. Then we recommend one direct marketing post. This could be an affiliate or your own. That is something where the entire point of that post is to sell something. Okay. You're recommending a product, whether it's a, your own product or an affiliate product. And then we have one just other, you know, that could be a, a quote it could be a quick comment on a news article. It could be a quick tip. It could be that you come back in with that other and occasionally post something of your own. 
or post somebody else's. You know, that that's the kind of the others. It's it's the wild card post. And I typically vary those. I don't say, okay, Monday is my post, you know, Tuesday is this. I say in a, in a given week, you might go with my own stuff. It might be Monday, Thursday, and then I'm going to post other people's stuff on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sunday, and then, you know, so on. And then the next week, it's my own stuff is Tuesday. It might be Tuesday, Wednesday. It might be back-to-back days. And so you just kind of vary it up and get kind of random with it. That gets them to know, like, and trust you and your recommendations. This is how you start doing affiliate marketing is you get your audience to know, like, and trust you and they will trust the products that you recommend. So number one was to provide consistent, valuable content to your followers. Number two, when you promote on any social media network, you really need to hone in on the, I love this product angle. You know, and in in some forms of marketing like email, you can be more generic in your promotions, but with social media, it's a social platform. You, it really helps to have used the product and to have an affinity for it. So you, it really helps to have a story and to talk about how much like it's okay on social media to just be like, I love this product. In fact, it's needed on social media. I mean, the name says that it's social media. These are the things you would say in a group of, of six people, you know, email, you think about email is, is more of what you would say if you were writing, you know, an article, what you would say if you were speaking to a large group where social media is more intimate. So you really want to hone in on that. I love this product angle. Third, focus on results. You know, I mentioned it helps to have a story. It helps to have the uh, where you were and where you are now as a result of this product. So really focus on what results did you get from the product? What was the big win for you? Focus on those results. Number four, as much as possible, don't link directly to your affiliate link. Okay. First of all, they are ugly. <laughs> they are, they're not attractive at all. So at the very least, use pretty link and make it pretty, not this long, ugly URL. Even better, write about it on your blog, do a video about it and link to that where they can read more details or watch the video. So as much as possible, don't just directly link to your affiliate link. Number five, work affiliate links into your regular content and posts. Now, again, we're talking about LinkedIn specifically. So if you're mentioning a book, use an Amazon link. If you mention a product, use an uh, affiliate link. Just make it natural. You know, just when you're just regularly posting content, whether it be on your blog or if you're posting something natively, I think that's the word natively. Yes, natively. I had to think about that. It didn't sound right. Natively to LinkedIn work your affiliate links into that content as opposed to making, you know, just specific things about it. Okay. Number six, use video as much as possible to promote. It it breaks the pattern a little bit from the written word. Uh, Reviews, especially reviews and comparisons work really well on social media. And those are often done best, you know, in video unboxing videos or just you talking about, Hey, here are the three email providers that I've used over the past few years and why I recommend each of them. Number seven with social media. So again, this applies to LinkedIn as often as possible, get them into a free funnel. You know, don't try that often to sell on social media. Social media is not really a great sales platform, especially if we're talking high ticket items. You know, if you're selling a box of crackers, you know, you're selling toilet paper, you know, $2 off toilet paper at Target. Yeah, you can sell. You can sell on that, right? It's, it's not that hard. It's toilet paper. It's a commodity. But when you're selling a, a $1,000 plus item, it's just not going to work selling them on social media. So don't try to sell on social. You want to get them into someone else's funnel and then let them do the selling. Or better yet, number eight, get them on your own email list that you own. This is, the, this is you own your email list. You don't own your connections. You know, LinkedIn, it's been around for, I mean, I first heard of LinkedIn, I think 2006. Might have even been 2005. I've been on LinkedIn for 13 years. It could just as easily explode and, and you know, 10 times your income 
as it could become the next MySpace. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't think MySpace would, I mean, almost overnight just went poof and disappeared, right? I think they're still around doing something. But who's been on MySpace? I mean, I, I can't remember the last time I was on MySpace. 2000, what have been 2009? No, 2008. It's been 10 years since I was on MySpace. It just disappeared overnight, right? And that could happen. You need to own your connections, which means converting them into an email list. So we go, going back to, you know, that, that format that I talked about earlier, when you're posting stuff of your own or when you're posting, you know, in that other mix or even in that direct marketing mix could be posting a free report, posting something that's a direct opt-in. But when you're posting your, your own content, make sure that you're periodically, you know, at least every other time, pointing them to something, some enhanced content, some opt-in, some lead magnet that you can get them into your email list. Okay. And number nine, break the rules sometimes. Yeah, I mentioned earlier, post back-to-back -back days about a product that's breaking the rules. You know, promote a product the day before a big promo with a heads up and then the next day when it's live or sell a post, uh, a product directly on social media. You know, periodically, like whether it be that format or one of these rules, find one of these rules and break them once a quarter or once every six months. You know, sometimes you have to break the rules because if you follow something that's formulaic, one of the problems is it does become very formulaic. Your audience doesn't really, uh, they're never surprised. So, you know, on some weeks, break that mold. You know, some weeks you may go really heavy on promotion and you promote three or four times that week. Some weeks, you know, maybe you, you share a quote back to back days. That's your content for that week. Or, you know, you post a lot of stuff or you, uh, you really hone in on, you know, getting them on your email list. Sometimes you, you know, you do maybe, I don't know, I would never use a direct affiliate link, but it's just kind of lame, but you know, maybe you post like back to back to back videos, you know, things like that. You just, you break the rules. So those are, I said, they're probably going to be an eight or nine. There's nine tips to really do some awesome affiliate marketing on LinkedIn. But again, these work on any network. So hope those help you. Again, if you've got a question, go to asktheaffiliateguide.com. You'll be on here just like Pat getting your question answered and I will see you in the next episode. Thanks so much for listening. Be sure to join us daily for more tips, updates, and inspiration. You can also join us and watch our deep dives into affiliate marketing strategies at theaffiliateguide.tv. And check all of our free resources at mattmcwilliams.com. See you next episode.